a little bunch of LPs on my mind, a little stack of CDs by my side, a whole bunch of music in my life. Greetings one and all and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Today I will be coming at you with my playlist video. This is a video I do every month in which I just talk about what I've been listening to for the past month that is not related to anything else on my channel, any of the regular features that I do. Uh, and yes, this month, as you can imagine, I've had a lot of time on my hands to listen to music. I mean, I, I am working uh, from home four days a week. I go into the office one day a week. So yes, I, I am working and thankfully uh, it is, you know, this whole quarantine business is not affecting my paycheck yet. Uh, so, but yeah, it still means though that I've got a lot of time on my hands to listen to music because that's one thing I can do while I'm working and it doesn't bother anybody else. Uh, but yeah, it's, and I've, as I said, I've had a ton of stuff that I've listened to this month. I'm still not going to, I'm going to show you a lot of it, but I'm still not going to show you all of it just to keep this video at a sane length. Uh, and, but I've been listening to a mixture of LPs and CDs this month. So I've got a small stack of both to show you. So let's just jump right on into it. Uh, the first one is a Burt Bacharach collection. It's from uh, Assorted Artists, but all songs composed by Burt Bacharach. He is, of course, one of the preeminent songwriters of the 20th century, in case you don't know who he is. If you don't know who he is, you've been living under a rock. But uh, yes, a very pleasant collection. And this actually was gifted to me uh, in a small stack of LPs for free from a friend and co-worker. So uh, thank you, Jay. I appreciate this. Uh, it's been a lot of fun listening to it. And uh, then we have... Uh, Tour de Force by 38 Special. Now this one has a lot of meaning to me because uh, this is, um, I actually have my own copy. This is not the copy of it that my brother has owned for a million years since it came out originally. And uh, since he listened to it to death uh, over the years, I've come to know it almost by heart. And uh, it's funny because otherwise I'm not really into 38 Special. I have, I think, one of their other albums and it's okay. But for some reason, the songs on this album, it is just, it's strictly the association of the songs to my childhood memory. They're kind of ingrained into my brain. And so, yeah, this is by default, I guess you'd say, my favorite 38 Special album, Tour de Force. Uh, check it out. It's got a lot of great songs on it if you haven't listened to it yet. Great. Um, Rock with a bit of blues is what 38 Special is known for. Uh, kind of in the same vein, roughly, as ZZ Top, I guess. Uh, Toto 4, you probably all know this album. Uh, Africa and Rosanna, two of probably Toto's two biggest hits, came off this album. And the great songs don't stop there. Check out this album if you haven't yet. It's great, great, great stuff. And then uh, some 80s stuff here. An, an 80s album by Aretha Franklin, Who's Zoom and Who? which is kind of uh, rather appropriate for the times right now since Zoom is the uh, video conferencing app that everybody's been using during quarantine. Uh, and I actually I actually picked this up at House of Records a few months ago before I knew what Zoom was. Uh, so it was like very aptly timed that I picked it up. Well, less than a few months ago. It was within a couple weeks before they closed to the public. But yeah, it's got uh, Freeway of Love, which was one of, the, one of her bigger hits from the 80s. And uh, sisters are doing it for themselves, uh, which she does with the Eurythmics. So yeah, and yeah, that song was both on this album and the Eurythmics album, which I just talked about in my backtracks feature. So a little tie in there. And Clarence Clemens from the E Street Band does a sax solo on one of these songs. And uh, Carlos Santana has a guitar solo on here. So it's it's kind of a bit of a star-studded album. And Dizzy Gillespie, the legendary great jazz trumpeter from the 30s and 40s and 50s, also uh, contributes to the closing track on here. So. Check out Aretha. Her best stuff was her soul stuff from the 60s, but check out her, her 80s stuff is worth listening to. Check it out. Then we have a uh, 70s AM radio mellow rock group called America. You guys might know who they are. Uh, they were one of my sister's lesser favorites. And this one... Did you give this one to me too, Jay? I can't remember if you did or not. But uh, yeah, a great, great album. It has one of their biggest hits, Ventura Highway, on it. And yeah, they were kind of like the Eagles, the same the same basic sonic palette as the Eagles. But yeah, just some good stuff. If you were not familiar with America, give, uh, give them a try. Horse With No Name is one of the better, uh, more songs that they're more famous for, but that's not on this album. So good album though. And then continuing the uh, bands named after continents, we have Asia, uh, their debut album, as well as Alpha, their sophomore album. Uh, picked both of those up at, at House of Records uh, right about the same time. No, a little bit before I picked up the Aretha album. But yeah, these are, uh, again, a couple of uh, favorites from my brother's and my childhood. 
Yeah. Some great songs on these albums. If you're not familiar with Asia, check them out, definitely. And then a couple of jazz selections. Uh, Double Vision, this is not the Foreigner album, no. And the song is not uh, actually... Uh, no, they actually don't even have a song called Double Vision on this album. It's just uh, called Double Vision. Bob James is a jazz keyboardist, and David Sanborn is a jazz saxophonist. They teamed up for this album. It's a fantastic album. And this, the CD of this was actually in my sister's uh, collection. And this was actually a freebie that I picked up on, off of House of Records' freebie shelf. Uh, and so I decided to... It, it was actually in fantastic condition. I don't know why they didn't buy it. Uh, so yeah, I am able to uh, retire the CD, because I would pr honestly... I, I'm, I'm turning a corner here. As I mentioned uh, earlier this year, I've begun to favor el uh, vinyl uh, versions of albums over the CD versions. So yes, I am ditching the, the CD version of this now that I have the LP. Uh, the album closes out with a jazz instrumental version of You Don't Know Me, which is a great jazz standard from the 30s, 40s, 50s. Dusty Springfield, I think, did a fairly... Oh no, it was not Dusty Springfield. It was not Petula Clark. Um, uh, so I can't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll have to put it in, the su in subtitles on the screen when I remember who it was. Did a great vocal rendition of it in the 60s, I believe, which was a pretty big hit. So, yeah. Long story short, that song's on here. And then continuing in the jazz field here, we have another artist that I have heard about you know, for ages and ages, but I never checked him out. Been curious about him, but never curious enough to actually check out his stuff. But I finally did this, I think, was also on the freebie shelf at House of Records. Chick Corea and his album Secret Agent. This is a fantastic album, honestly. If I'd known that a Chick Corea album was going to be this good, I would have checked him out years ago. Just fantastic. Some great guitar solos on here, electric guitar solos. And uh, it's it's a mixture of uh, vocal songs and instrumental. It's mostly instrumental. But yeah, just uh, some fantastic stuff. S some blues, some rock-flavored stuff, and then some straight-ahead jazz. But yeah, uh, Chick Corea is just a wicked keyboard player. Uh, it's just fantastic. And uh, Al Jarreau actually contributes vocals to one of the songs on this album. But uh, yeah, and I'm not sure where this one ranks in Chick Corea's discography, if this is one of his best albums or his better-selling albums. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. But uh, if this is what all of his other albums sound like, this was a fantastic place to start. I am definitely, definitely going to check out more of Chick Corea. Fantastic album, Secret Agent. And then remaining on the subject of jazz, but transitioning over to the CDs that I listened to this month, uh, we have Frank Sinatra. This was, uh, this was actually yet another one that was on the freebie shelf. Uh, this is a collection. I, at first, I thought it was a compilation of Frank Sinatra stuff, which I already have, so I was kind of thinking, oh, I got a compilation I didn't need. But no, this is actually an assortment, a collection of three of his early albums, as you can see down here. And a very good uh, mix of stuff, some of his earlier stuff. There were a couple of uh, marks on one of the CDs, but otherwise I think the only reason this was in the freebie section was, was because the uh, the trays were had come off of the uh, cardboard cover. But uh, that's what glue is for. So yeah, it's pretty much good as new. Uh, nice firmly and put back together, pasted back together, but yeah, good bunch of stuff. Uh, and, and one of his albums, I think one of the albums on there is coming up on an anniversary, I think. I might be mistaken, but uh, anyway. And uh, also, again, on the freebie shelf, uh, there was a fantastic set of freebies that was uh, on one of my last visits to House of Records. Uh, I, I should have known that the store was going to close up or, or that something was amiss because it was such a good set of uh, selection of CDs. I got a bunch of stuff out of there. Uh, this is a two-CD set, uh, individually packaged, of Ella Fitzgerald, the Cole Porter songbook. And, uh, hey, Ella Fitzgerald, I mean, come on. Uh, you, you gotta love her. I mean, she's one, one of the preeminent vocalists of the 20th century, jazz vocalists. And yeah, a great set of songs. Uh, both CDs have 16 tracks on them. So yeah, a great primer on uh, the Cole Porter songbook and on Ella Fitzgerald's vocals. Just fantastic set. And then uh, moving on to uh, classical music. This is the only classical selection in this set. It's kind of a fun little thing. The Classical Zoo. It's a bunch of uh, animal-related compositions and stuff. It actually has one of the more better known uh, suites or compositions or works in classical music, The Carnival of the Animals. And uh, Itzhak Perlman actually narrates uh, a lot of this stuff, as you can see his name on here. Does a great job, although it's a little bit quiet. Uh, I had trouble with, you know, uh, the music gets so loud in some places and then his narration is so soft that I, you kind of have to constantly play with the volume control. But uh, yeah, a great little fun selection of classical music. It's a lot of fun. 
And then uh, every once in a while, I pick up a soundtrack that uh, to a movie or TV series that I have never watched. It's just not my kind of thing. But uh, the Walking Dead soundtrack, Volume 1, uh, this was in the $1 section at Epic Seconds a couple months back. And uh, yeah, it was just I just decided to pick it up. My brother is a huge fan of The Walking Dead. I've watched a few episodes, uh, a few clips of episodes. It's just as I said, it's not my thing, but a good selection of music on here, just uh, great. And and yes, like a couple of months ago or last month, the uh, um, Forrest Gump soundtrack. That is another in those categories of soundtracks from movies I've never watched. What can I say? And then uh, moving on to a compilation that was again, this was in the freebies section at House of Records. Uh, an evening at Rouse. I guess Rouse is an Italian, I think, restaurant in New York City. Very famous. Uh, gets a lot of has a lot of distinguished clientele over the years. Yeah, this was a very interesting thing. A compilation. It has The Temptations, Tony Bennett, Jerry Vale, Willie Nelson, uh, Dion, The Shirelles, uh, Louis Prima, and of course Dean Martin. Being an Italian restaurant, it's going to have to have Dean Martin there. But yeah, just a fantastic selection of stuff. Um, I've never been to the restaurant and probably never will, according to the size of my wallet. But hey, nice to have a little souvenir here. And I don't know if this was sold only at the restaurant or only through a website or if this was available widely in stores or not. But kind of cool to have a very, very weird, uh, obscure collectible. It was on the Sony label, uh, so it was a major label release, but it was uh, probably a very limited, very niche release. But still, it's an awesome compilation and uh, one of the more treasured obscurities that I've added to my collection. It's a great thing. And then we have a two-disc set of Reba's number ones, Reba McIntyre's Greatest Hits. Uh, this was from 2005. So yeah, fairly recent, not super recent, but uh, yeah, two discs full of Reba's Greatest Hits. Definitely happy to add that one to my collection, just to uh, get a bit more of a... And, and actually, uh, the timing with this is that it does have the title song from her sitcom, uh, on here. It's one of the tracks. I don't know if that was uh, available on one of her albums or not, but uh, I actually really enjoyed that sitcom. It was a lot of fun. Uh, who'd have known that a uh, country singer would be such a good actress, but yeah. Favorite show of mine. And then we have uh, moving on to a folk artist uh, who I actually sh uh, shouted out in Backtracks just recently. Joan Baez. I had never uh, never tried Joan Baez out before, and so I decided, and this was again in the freebie section at House of Records, uh, I picked it up, and it's her great. It's a greatest hits collection, and she's very, very. Nice. I love her voice. She's got this very soaring, uh, airy, ethereal, lilting voice that's just great for perfect for folk songs. And no, it's no wonder that she's got, gotten a career, of, what several decades long, out of uh, uh, music. So, yeah, fantastic voice and a lot of great songs on here. It's wonderful, wonderful album. It's making me consider strongly checking out Joan Baez in more depth. Then we have, and I can't remember, oh, I got this at Walmart, um, Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die, the fourth album by Panic at the Dis Disco, and the fourth one that I own. I've uh, picked them up in, in sequential order, basically. So yeah, good stuff, and uh, the fact that it was produced by Butch Walker kind of got me curious to listen to it, because I, I have enjoyed some of the stuff that Butch Walker has put out as an artist. And of course, there are a couple of other albums that I have that he produced that I really enjoy. But uh, yeah, good stuff. And I'm, I did not like Panic at the Disco's la last album. I can't remember the name of it uh, that was put out a couple years ago. But you know, the more I listen to them, the more I'm th thinking about uh, you know streaming that album once more and uh, checking it out just to see if I might have a change of heart on that. And then the last CD in the selection today is. Uh, Definitely not the least. This is one of the best ones that I've heard in recent years. I am a fairly new convert to the band Cake. They are a rock band, but they put they throw a lot of different stuff into uh, their music. And this is, in my opinion, this is probably their best album so far. I don't know if it's critically acclaimed as their best album, but acclaimed by me, it's their best album. And it has one of their f the biggest hits, The Distance, which has uh, hip-hop elements of rap in it. So that's another thing that they throw into their sound. But yeah, this is just all over the place. Um, they have a cover of the, um, oh, what's her name, Gloria Gaynor song, I Will Survive, the disco anthem from the 70s, as well as a jazz standard, Perhaps, 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 is on here. And they close out with a cover of a Willie Nelson song, Sad Songs and Waltzes. So this album is just all over the place. It is just fantastic. I went on a bit of a buying spree and picked up like four cake albums just because uh, I like the distance so much and 
Uh, I am not disappointed in any, any of their albums, but this one by far is my favorite so far of the ones that I've listened to. So if you have not tried out Fashion Nugget by Cake, you've got to give it a listen. It's a fantastic album. Well, I hope I didn't go through those too quickly. Uh, I had, uh, I think, 18 titles, 9 CDs, and 9 records to get through, and I, so I didn't want to make this video too long. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's the one good thing about this quarantine business is it's helped me to uh, catch up on my CD listening completely, as you might have seen in a Twitter pic that I posted recently. I actually did get all the way caught up on my CD listening, uh, but my record listening, uh, vinyl listening, is still has a bit of a ways to go. Yes, aside from these nine that I showed you, I had at least another nine or ten or twelve that I listened to also this month that I didn't bother talking about because they weren't all that special. But yeah, I've still got that many, you know, a dozen and a half to listen to still that I before I catch up. And that's not even counting the uh, A to Z records that I have stashed away and a couple other things here and there. Got one or two Spotlight albums I think I have saved up. But yeah, this was a lot of fun. And uh, hopefully, uh, well, maybe, hopefully, my next playlist video will be just as uh, substance-rich I guess you'd say. I'm, I'm making up phrases right now. So anyway, I better, guess I better close out this video. That'll do it for Playlist for the month of April 2020, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms? Lay them on me in the comments section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe and healthy out there, everyone. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob.